Hello, everybody. This is Blockchain for Humanity channel, where we talking about the interesting project, interesting people, ideas, uh, all related to the Bitcoin and education. And today we have a very special guest from Slovakia, uh, yeah. Dusan. Pleasure to have you here. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. I'm right now actually in Slovakia. Oh, right. <laughs> so I'm enjoying for some time uh, a Slovak weather but coming to, to Honduras uh, in a couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm doing great and I'm happy to, to be here. So we will talk about your project, which is Amity H. But uh, first of all, I, I would like to ask you about uh, your story. Because it looks very interesting. Uh, I would uh, love to ask you about uh, your background. How, how did you get in the Bitcoin world? And uh, how in the world did you end up in Honduras, teaching people about the Bitcoin. <laughs> yes, that's a crazy story. I wouldn't, two years ago, I would have no idea that I would end up in Honduras, but let's go to the basics. So um, I'm Dusan, I'm a Bitcoin educator from Slovakia, and uh, my background is in teaching. I used to teach mathematics, physics, and English here in Slovakia, and that was basically my first job that I had when I was in uh, high school and university. Um, and I got into Bitcoin more involved in 2017. I was very skeptical since I, I'm a, I have a critical mind and a very skeptical mind. I was very skeptical initially towards towards Bitcoin. And uh, my very good friend um, sat with me and, and told me like, he, he didn't tell me about how to get rich on Bitcoin, but we were talking as the channel is uh, watching for humanity. Um, he, he was telling me about how Bitcoin can really help people who are unbanked around the world. Um, how to get them be part of the global financial system. So I got very interested. And a couple of months after I dig deep, I, I was like spending my my days and weeks uh, reading and listening to everything I could find about Bitcoin. And after a couple of time, a couple of weeks and months, I did my first um, workshop on Bitcoin for for ba for beginners. And I fell in love with that. You know, teaching is one of my passions and Bitcoin as a, as a new passion was uh, the best mixture for me. So I started to do a lot of education here in Slovakia, uh, doing uh, workshops, webinars and podcasts and also educating schools. Since I was working with, uh, with the kids a lot, I was even working in a kindergarten for some time. Uh, I, I saw a huge potential in, in young people learning about what is money, what's the history of money and what the future of money might look like. So I translated a couple of books uh, from English to Slovak language. We wow. even crowdfunded one book uh, and get more than 20,000 euros. So in the end, we sent more than 3,000 books to schools for free. Uh, I was teaching teachers how to use the book on their classes of financial literacy. So this is what I was spending my, my recent years. And then about two years ago, we started mining Bitcoin. And our main objective was to finance our education activities. So we were mining to educate. That's our main purpose. And one of our education, uh, one of our mining clients, um, one day sent me a picture of a beautiful beach with palms and his family um, and telling me like, Dusan, this is, a, this is a paradise on earth. You need to come here. It's, it's called Roatan. And I'm like, okay, where is it? I had no idea. Is it Asia? Is it Africa? I was literally no idea. And I Googled it out and it was like Honduras. I'm like, oh my God, like Honduras is a dangerous place. That's what we are told here. And I was asking Robert, like, Robert, are you sure? Should I really come? Isn't it dangerous? He said, it's, it's amazing here. It's a very safe place. You need to come and explore the island. So last year in March, we came with my colleague and his family to the island with my girlfriend. And we were just for 10 days exploring the whole island. And we fell in love with that. It's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, I'm a sailor for my whole life. I was sailing since I was 11 um, and there is water all, ar all around. So I was very intrigued to be somewhere where there is a water. And uh, two days before we left to the Bitcoin conference in Miami, there was something called the Prospera Summit on the Roatan. And I had no idea what that was. And I checked the website and it seems like they, they want to build a future uh, jurisdiction, very open to Bitcoin. But it seems to me, since I'm a you know a critical person, it seems to me very sketchy, like a shitcoin project. But I was like, okay, I'm on the Roatan, it's happening here, let's go and check it out. And I was super surprised. I was really expecting, you know, five people on the beach with a beer under a tent having fun. 
and telling how they're going to change the world. But when I come to Prospera, uh, they already had buildings built out, office spaces, co-working space. There was a residential tower being built. And I was like, oh, my God, like this is real. It's not only on a, on a paper, but it's, it's something tangible. Um, and there were about 50 other people from around the world, from Bitcoin communities. There were Bitcoin OGs that were in Bitcoin since 2010. And I was speaking to them. And I was like, wow, this is something. So we had the opportunity to present our ideas that we would like to develop on Roatan. And I was, okay, so I will present my idea of a Bitcoin education center. This is something that I had in my mind for some time. So I presented it. I told about my background, about the parallel police project that we were doing in, in Bratislava, you know, the, the crypto cafe that we had here. And there was a guy sitting in the first row told me, Dushan, I love the idea and I would like you to build it here. And he told me, he, he took me to the highest point of Roatan, where is a beautiful building. He told me like, Dushan, if you like it, you can start doing it here. Wow. This place is available and you can start and build your, uh, build your academy. I'm like, oh, wow, this is crazy. Because it would, it would mean a complete change of my lifestyle, place where I live. So I spoke a lot with my girlfriend about that because it's not only my decision but you know we wanted to do decisions together but in the end we decided to do it so in june uh, i came to Roatan to start to build the academy and we opened it up in uh, october last year and since then we are operating from prospera which is uh, one of the most bitcoin friendly jurisdiction in the world uh, you can pay all the taxes in bitcoin uh, you can accept bitcoin for uh, as a payment uh, because Bitcoin is de facto a legal tender there. And I pay my taxes in Bitcoin. So it took, it takes me two minutes, open a platform. I decide, you know, I type in how much I earned. 1% is the tax. And I can decide whether to buy, to pay in, um, in a card or with a Bitcoin. So I click Bitcoin, scan a code, pay for it, and that's it. So the governance model of Prosperize is amazing. And it's very suited for Bitcoin companies. So that was also one of the reasons why we decided to set it up in Prospera on Roatan, uh, because all the people around are very freedom-minded, uh, oriented for private property and for private governance. And this would really got me intrigued to be part of that and, and help out as much as I can. So that's how we started. And today, uh, what we do, we are onboarding merchants into Bitcoin, currently having more than 50 merchants accepting Bitcoin on Roatan. We are running... Um, school, we are cooperating with schools and running Bitcoin Diploma developed in El Salvador. And we are doing these 10-week education programs, finishing with graduation and diplomas where young people are learning about history uh, of money. And so, Sorry, uh, so you're using the, the um, my first Bitcoin Diploma? You, you collaborated yes. with them? Yes, we were one of the first oh. um, kind of projects or communities teaching the, the diploma outside of El Salvador. I think we're the second after Guatemala. Nice. That's nice. So you actually answered the, my second question, which was, uh, what is the uh, MTH? How is it working? How you approach the people? Uh, mm -hmm. You go in, you making calls and uh, inviting the people to come to the center or you just visiting the local shops and how, how are you approaching the people? So we have various ways to do it. So one way is onboarding merchants. As I said, we just go and we explain why they can, how they can benefit from uh, accepting Bitcoin. So that's that's one part of our job. And the other, since we have the physical place, people come to us to have a coffee, have a drink, have a waffle, bagel, uh, and they can experience paying with Bitcoin. So we have the ATM where people can buy and sell. Uh, they can buy Bitcoin and they can directly pay with it on our POS. We are running our own node. We self-host our BTC pay server. So we are really kind of um, trying to push the self-custody and open source protocols around as well. Um, and since it's kind of hard for locals to travel to our place, when we cooperate with schools, we don't expect kids in buses coming to us, but we go to the schools. It's easier for one teacher or two teachers to go than just like 30 kids to move them here to our, our center. So um, that's the work we do with schools directly. But of course, people can come in um, and we have open classes. So people can come in certain times and they have free education there. Uh, or they can book a private sessions one-on-one, -on -one, which are paid. 
and uh, we explained them everything. I was doing uh, treasure workshops every month, setting up treasures for merchants um, and various other other workshops. So we, we don't only use external curriculums like me Premier Bitcoin, but we have our own, um, you know, slides and, and presentations and workshops that we do. And what is the... Um... Uh, for those who wants to diploma or kind of certifications, uh, what is the kind of exam or test that they need to do to, to get that certification? Mm -hmm. So in Bitcoin diploma, you need to kind of fulfill the, the 10 classes, which takes about 60 to 90 minutes, uh, which go from the history of money through what is debt, inflation, up to a Bitcoin, how it works. And in the end, they, they have a test where they need to answer some questions and uh, show how to set up a wallet, how to send the payment. So it's theoretical and practical as well. And this is, the, this is how, the, how it works in El Salvador. And in the end, they have, they have the graduation and they receive the diploma that they, they passed the exam. Um, and right now, actually, there's already one or two graduates from school that were employed based on the Bitcoin diploma, which is pretty cool because we nice. have a... A Bitcoin scuba shop. There is Emilio, who is a bit, huge Bitcoiner. He's running a scuba shop, and he employed one of the girls uh, to his scuba shop because she, she was one of the best uh, students. She's very into Bitcoin, and he is into Bitcoin. So he's like, okay, I want Bitcoiners in my scuba shop. So he he employed her. Cool. That's 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 very interesting. And um, what what? kind of people you are targeting are you going you said you're going to the school so you targeting the young people or you just uh, any anyone can can be the the one who who gets the diploma yes right now we have the the bitcoin diplomas we run uh, currently only with schools because it's more easier for logistics and everything but when i came to rotan in september we want to run the first public bitcoin diploma where people anybody can join and uh, doesn't matter if it's young, older, whatever, they can join and they, they will go and attend these classes and in the end receive the diploma. But again, this is, this is the kind of an ongoing program or like a long-term program. But then we have regular sessions, workshops based on like what is lightning, how does the Bitcoin work, uh, the basics of economics and, and these kind of things that we run in the center or again in the schools. Mm -hmm. So when we work with a school, um, first of all, we... You know, we, we are doing the workshops for the teachers so they understand what we do because on the right hand, sadly, there are a lot of crypto scams. People got scammed a lot and they are very um, skeptical towards Bitcoin because they see it all as one ecosystem. And so it's kind of sometimes harder to explain them like we are not the scammers, but we really want to help you understand what money is. Uh, and it takes some time, of course. Some schools even refuse to work with us at this moment because they are afraid if yeah. we're gonna you know push some scams into the kids we said okay we aren't gonna force you maybe later you're gonna work with us and do you see uh, do you see also the the kind of evolution like we saw in in salvador that the young people their children that was uh that was learning about the bitcoin then they was teaching they they uh families and their pa parents about the bitcoin can you can you see that also in uh in honduras Yes, yes, that's happening. Uh, some of the parents even visited us because their kids told us told them about the center. So they came and we had like a short session with them to explain the basics and they were super happy to come and, and to understand it. And they told us like they had complete different opposite view on what Bitcoin is. And thanks to the kids and, and thanks to us, they changed their mindset about what it really is. So this kind of fills me with hope that uh, sometimes the education can come from the youngest generation to, to the parents and to the older generations that's great and um, i know very little about the honduras and i would like to know how how the people seeing uh, what is happening in salvador like they accepting the bitcoin as a legal tender is is that something that uh, they would follow they would be happy if, if is it possible in in honduras it is possible. It's very interesting when we speak to people who have no idea about Bitcoin or like very basic idea. The one thing that they already know is that it's used in Salvador. Almost everybody heard about that. Like, yeah, I, I know that it's some kind of a money that they have in Salvador. So that's the first good step because they don't then see it 
completely as a scam. Um, and since in Honduras, it's, it's legal to, to work with Bitcoin, but it's still kind of a gray zone on, in one side. But the central bank uh, kind of set up some structure on how to work with Bitcoin. They oh, don't. Really? Wow, that's nice. Yeah. They don't support it in a way that they tell you it's, it's risky. It's on your own risk but they don't regulate it on a huge level as Europe trying to do. Um, so it's, it's legal to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment in a businesses. But of course, they treat it this kind of the same way as dollars, where you need to have your prices in Lempiras, the local currency. You need to count you know, the price when you receive Bitcoin and when you put it out and you need to pay you know, capital gains on that. Um, so, so it's not very broad, very popular in, in Honduras in general. We, we are focusing mostly on Roatan, which is an island on the coast of, of, of Honduras. But we already did uh, education on the mainland in San Pedro Sula uh, and schools around that. So all in all, we educated more than 2,000, maybe 2,500 kids and people. Wow. Well, that, that was kind of my next question. Uh, what is your goal for the future? How you you see how to expand because uh, I read somewhere you're trying to mine Bitcoin somewhere there to fund in the project. So what is your vision for uh, for the future for the project? So the big vision of my vision and the MTH vision is that we want to educate uh, 100 million people about Bitcoin, wow. ideally by 20, 2030. So we still have a couple of years to go. And uh, of course, we not, we cannot do it alone. It's It's a big number. So I... I put a number so big so that I, I need to think differently. And uh, the goal that we want to do or what I'm working on right now is I'm developing a, a structure or or ske schedule or curriculum for Bitcoin Educators Academy. And this is the academy for future or current Bitcoin educators, how they can be the beacons of light in their own communities around the world. So we want to run the first Bitcoin Educators Academy on Roatan, hopefully this October or November. Uh, if not, logistically, maybe January or February. And it will be a physical 10-day academy, very intense, for about 12 educators. And each one will be from a different part of the world, different country. And this is something that we want to scale up later on also to online. And really, METH Academy being the uh, the main educator of Bitcoin educators, because I was doing this train the trainers academies around Europe uh, a couple of years ago, not related to Bitcoin, but in general, how to set up a training, how to create a training, how to train others. And I fell in love with that. So this way, we we want to get to the numbers so that we can create more educators that will be, you know, the lighthouses within their own communities. That's that's great. And how you mentioned uh, Europe. So I wanted to ask you, What's the, what's the differences in the point of view about the Bitcoin in Latin America and, and Europe? Because it must be different. It's totally different. In Europe, people see it as a speculation and maybe a form, form of investment. Um, in Central America, people see it much more like a medium of exchange as a way to really use money. Because um, the communities I visited are very cash-based. Um, cash um, but, you know, the banks in, in Central America or in Honduras, they don't work efficiently. You go into the bank, you wait in line for 30 minutes just to deposit your money or just to get the money out. Um, for In order to open a bank account in dollars, you need to have like minimum of 200 or $500. So it's very legacy old system. And uh, with Bitcoin, people see that it, it can work much more efficiently. They don't need to travel that much. Uh, they can solve things much more you know, in a faster way. So we start to cooperate, for example, with the Osmo wallet from Guatemala, which will be a very easy on-ramp and off-ramp for locals in Honduras to get into Bitcoin and get out and pay with it. So, um, you know, I like to say that people in Europe are asking why Bitcoin? because they don't get it. Everything kind of works here in terms of banks and, and you know, payment rails. But in Latin America or Central America, people are asking how, how to do yeah. Bitcoin and not why, because they already know the why. And in Argentina, especially with the inflation and everything, it's, it's very obvious why Bitcoin. Sure. 
And what's your point of view about the CBDC in Europe? Because it looks like this is coming. Hard to tell. I, I hope that there will be a lot of people not approving it. Um, but a lot of people in Europe are very state dependent. They think or they believe that state and government should solve their problems and they might be easily sold on CBDCs. And my work or our work uh, is about showing them the risks of totalitarian, totalitarian financial kind of system like CBDCs. Sadly, there are more than 114 countries around the world already in a either testing phase, research phase or, or, or implementation phase of CBDCs. Um, and, uh, but my hope that, that gave me hope was speaking to people from Nigeria because there is eNaira as their own CBDC and the support of that is less than 0.4% of population. So it's very low, which is good. And, and Nigeria is the, is the largest peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin economy in the world. So people don't trust the government and whatever they do, they see it as a, as a way to get you know, money from the people. In Europe, it's not the, the the trust in the government is still quite high, which is sad in my side. But um, I think with education, we can show people that this is not the way to go, and hopefully, we will create this barrier of resistance against a, a centralized system like CBDCs. Right. So, and um, you doing the same in, in Slovakia? I, I, like, I mean. Did you open MTH in Slovakia? Also, is there people that are interested in 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 learning about the Bitcoin? There is a lot of people, and I do a lot of education here in Slovakia, um, mostly individual education or with schools. But we don't have like a physical center uh, because it's kind of logistically difficult to run it, since we also have a little cafeteria there. Most of my time is not spent on. Uh, on education, but on, on, on management, which uh, I need to solve a little bit so I can focus much more on education. Um, so running more centers like the one we have in, in uh, Roatan would be difficult at this moment. Uh, so until we set up everything well, we are not ready to open another center. Maybe we do in Paraguay because that's where we are doing the mining. You, you, are, you are asking about the mining as well. So for us, the motivation to mine was to have a, a way how to finance our education activities. Because in education, it's very hard to sustain your business or sustain the activities. You're relying on crowdfunding, on, on uh, you know, in funding from the community or some, some donations, which is volatile. One day you have it, the other you don't. So we wanted to create like a system that's more um, sustainable. And that's why we opted into mining and the clients that we have that we are doing self-mining, but we're also hosting machines in Paraguay. And uh, the clients who are hosting with us are mostly the ones who like our mission of education and want to be part of that because a lot of the resources that we receive from mining, we put back into community and back into education. So if anybody wants to support us long-term, they can become our mining clients and we host their machines and, and we use it for education. Sure. So what's your... Uh social network where can people find you to learn about you or support you they can find us on twitter uh, at meth or dusan underscore matuska that's that's my uh, profile handle um or i'm on linkedin as dusan matuska as well and uh, just briefly about meth because it's uh, some people are like asking like why the name sometimes they even cannot uh, tell it so how the name came up to be when we were thinking with my co-founder Gabriel about what Bitcoin means to us, uh, we realized it means a technology that can connect people uh, around the globe and that can bring um, cooperation, friendship, fellowship, and peace. And there is a word in English, amity, which means harmony, peaceful, cooperation, and fellowship. So we see Bitcoin as a technology that can bring the age of amity, the era of cooperation. So that's why we chose the name Amity Age. And nice. in our logo, in our logo, there is this mascot, this little girl, which is Emity Nakamoto, the granddaughter of Satoshi. Um, so she's the young blood. She's the she's the girl who leading this education journey for people. And 
she's the one communicating uh, towards the crowds and towards people. So we kind of played a little bit with this story and uh, and created a new character, uh, Emity Nakamoto. Great. So my last question for you will be, you kind of said that already, but I ask everybody on the interviews, uh, special, especially people that are very convinced about the Bitcoin, what Bitcoin means to you personally? What's your definition on Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin for me means a way of life, a philosophy of freedom, of expressing um, the freedom motives that I have. For me, it's like a peaceful revolution. If if you don't like the financial system, you don't need to fight it. You don't need to get elected to government to change it from within. But you can vote against with your own money and using parallel financial system. So for me, it means really living by my own values of freedom and using money that's the most sound money that ever existed and uh, supporting system that's not based on coercion, not not based on violence, but on a peaceful and voluntary cooperation. Wow. Yeah, great. So uh, thank you very much, Dushan, for this interview. It was a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we wish you the best for your goals for the future. It's very important to think the, the work you're doing, because as we know, the education is the most important part on, on ado adoption of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So, um, Congratulations for your work. Thank you very much for being here and uh, hope to see you soon somewhere. Thank you, Ivan.